A pleasant evening to all on behalf of Intandem Research Club. I welcome you all to the fortnightly symposium of Research Department of English, Queen Mary's College. I am Farhana Begum of First MA English Literature, comparing for this wonderful evening. We have a theme based on series for this academic year, 2023 to 2024, titled Interdisciplinary Literary Studies. Our today's topic is literature and development studies. Today, we have a vibrant, vibrant keynote speaker, Dr. Daya Pagya Sharin, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Queen Mary's College, Chennai. Welcome you, ma'am. I extend my warm welcome to faculty members, research scholars, and PG students who are presented at this forum. I deem it an honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Daya Bhagya Sharin. Ma'am is an expertise in gender equality and social justice. She has 20 years of teaching experience across the city. She worked in various colleges like Tangavelo Engineering College, Mohammed Sadat Austin Science College. We are greatly blessed to have you at Ms. Ma'am. We welcome you, Ma'am. Now I request Dr. Daya Pastor Sharin, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Queen Mary's College, Chennai, to give her keynote addresses on on the title The Need to, The Need for Educational Equity in the story that must not be told. The forum is yours, ma'am. Thank you, Fahana. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. P Maria Preeti Srinivasan for giving me an opportunity to present my paper today. The purpose of uh, this presentation is to critically analyze the novel, The Story That Must Not Be Told written by Kaveri Nambisan in order to re-emphasize the need for uh, educational equity in the society. Let me share this uh, PPT. Ma'am, are you able to see, ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, the PPT, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Pardon, one second. From the beginning. Okay. Okay. So, as teachers and students of literature, <clears throat> we are all aware of the fact that literature contributes to the intellectual and emotional uh, intelligence, uh, emotional development of individuals and societies. And here we have developmental studies, an established area of scholarly inquiry, which takes development as its major concern. And it has its roots in multiple disciplines, such as economics, politics, anthropology, sociology, geography, etc. People who are engaged in the study, they analyze the past, present and future trends to generate applied knowledge in order to uh, provide better solutions to the real world problems. They also analyze the growth and evolution of nations uh, or a nation from socioeconomic, political, geographical and uh, cultural perspectives. In this yeah. lecture, I would like to focus on developmental economics which seeks to address the socio-economic problems or challenges of the society, such as poverty, unemployment, child labor, starvation, etc. The development economists who are uh, concerned about the quality of uh, quality of life and uh, well-being of people. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, 
in this lecture i would like to focus on development economics and uh, the development economists who are concerned about the quality of life and the well-being of people they devise strategies that can lift a country out of its dejected state and elevate it into a fully developed one and one among them is indian nobel uh, laureate uh, amartya sen a leading economist considered as the godfather of uh, developmental thinking and practice and he is also considered as a social philosopher for his expertise and versatility in bringing a uh, bridging two disciplines that is economics and ethics in his uh, contribution to human development now sen uh and he is uh, like he is a proud recipient of many prestigious awards and he has authored more than two dozen uh, uh books and countless articles now sen in his uh, uh best known essay titled enlightenment in entitlement and deprivation he states that starvation is not caused by food shortage but because of the shortage of income many people fail to get food clothing and shelter not because they are inaccessible but because the people don't have the purchasing power to acquire food and other basic necessities so his idea of entitlement was born out of the of his analysis on the causes of famines and this became uh, the conceptual forerunner to what is to, uh, popularly today known as uh, capability approach this capability approach is a theoretical framework pioneered by dr amartya sen to evaluate individuals well being so this approach implies a paradigm shift in the understanding of human development poverty and inequality so this approach is otherwise called people centered approach because the perspective of uh, development here is not material based it is purely based on human development and it revolves uh, uh, involves people's well being so according to sen most of the people lack the basic um, opportunities such as healthcare facilities yeah. elementary education profitable employment so um, economic and social security and uh, gender inequality equality and uh, he says that this approach actually this approach recommends the removal of this deprivation and it uh, promotes the expansion of these opportunities like basic education healthcare and gender equity so uh, he believes that this kind of uh, uh, expansion of uh, basic opportunities would help a person to uh, face the world with courage and freedom courage and uh, freedom and courage and he can lead a normal life now the core concepts of this approach are uh, functioning capabilities and agency now according to sen a person's well being is assessed based on his uh, functionings and here achievements or functionings and sen uses the term functionings to denote achievements so this uh, functionings are nothing but the valued beings and doings of a person for example and there are two types of uh, functionings elementary functionings and complex one functionings and uh, for example if a person is able to read and write and get access to healthcare facilities healthy food and is if he is able to enjoy all uh, um, uh, what to say good health and etc then he is said to have enjoyed elementary functionings and if this if a person is able to be happy enjoying self respect and dignity and uh, if he is able to take part in social meetings and discussions then he is said to have accomplished complex functionings now you have capabilities and uh, this is otherwise opportunities uh, they are the basic uh, building blocks or uh, these are the opportunity capabilities are nothing but opportunities that help a person to achieve all these functionings now the third one is agency the agency is otherwise called uh, ability of a person so uh, the hu human agency is the central idea of this uh, approach because this approach uh, views each and every person as an active and responsible participant in the process of development rather than a passive spectator so here uh, ability uh, agency is the ability of a person to persuade his, uh, pursue his goals and expand the opportunities that would help him to contribute more for his own development and also for the community 
and um, um, uh, so a, a person or an agent after accomplishing his own uh, after attaining his own personal uh, well-being goals if he strives to work for the well-being of or the welfare of the deprived ones uh, in the society then it is said to be referred as agency it is uh, referred as agency success so now capability approach uh, gives importance to um, uh, like uh, opportunity um opportunity and agency so all and uh, sen also considers there that uh, uh, there are so many uh, capabilities such as political freedom economic freedom then uh, social opportunity uh, opportunities transparent guarantees um, uh, and he considers these uh, uh, freedoms or opportunities as the basic building blocks for development uh, so here i want to focus on only social opportunities it mean uh, it mean like uh, uh, arrangements a society makes for education healthcare so that a person can live a better life so in this novel we uh, i would like to focus on the lack of um, social opportunities uh, because um, uh the uh, kavari nabisen has uh, uh, has depicted the life of uh, the slum dwellers who lack these social opportunities in their life now kavari nabisen a surgeon and uh, novelist and she believes that life feeds literature and highly influenced by the simple and the truthful lives of uh, gandhi and thoreau she volunteered to serve the less fortunate in the rural places and she has also authored um, five novels and she has written articles on uh, healthcare issues uh, and it's quite apparent from her uh, interviews that she is deeply affected by the socially and economically ingrained in inequities that exist in the society now the story uh, in this uh, novel she um, tries to focus on how uh, unavailability of this elementary education uh, food or a good uh, healthcare uh, facilities or clean water affect the physical and mental well-being of the poor and she also intends to situate that this education equity uh, must be ensured in the lives of socially and economically disadvantaged people so that it uh, so that they escape from this gruesome uh, poverty and uh, uh, miseries of their of this life of their life now the story is set in madras where the rich and the poor live adjacent to each other the citizens of vibhav apartments they enjoy all the basic amenities and facilities beyond the measure whereas these people who are living in sitara that's the slum uh, they suffer miserably in a deplorable environment now this uh, uh, protagonist simon is a 74 year old widower he, he lives in vibhav apartments situated next to sitara and he has so much of love and concern for the ch slum children now we have other uh, primary characters like uh, si uh, swami a butcher ten turned teacher and uh, uh, prince a quack turned uh, uh, politician and uh, chandran chandamare sendamare and you have migrant laborers like chellam his wife valli their uh, sons son avelu and daughter then you have a manual scavenger kitten and his wife nanji and his uh, son, and their son dutkin so all these uh, characters they live in the slum and uh, here uh, though the people of vibhav apartments they rely on sitara for all the uh, construction work and household work they wish to eradicate they want to eradicate these people from their uh, vicinity for some safety and hygiene uh, pur hygienic purpose and uh, so the rich people uh, they plan to get the help of the municipal corporation media police to relocate the slum dwellers to tambaram and uh, where each and every person would be given 175 square feet of space in a 70 uh, seven story uh, story building so the epilogue informs the reader uh, the last chapter informs the reader uh, about how about simon recalling the demolition that happens throughout the night and the slum dwellers are displaced and they are forced to settle in some other places now he comes to know that simon has uh, swami after 8 months he comes to know that swami has opened his newly butcher shop at veperi Uh, and he continues to teach a few few hours after work then you uh, have uh, sendamare and chandran with their six month uh, um, 
da daughter living at Keel Park uh, with some decent work and uh, they have the sense of security about the future now. And Velu, who uh, he lives with his parents at Tambaram. He spends most of the time at Swami's place. And But now we see the hatred and uh, the prejudice of the uh, rich has culminated in the annihilation of the slum, but then the scattered inhabitants of the slum are able to rebuild their lives uh, with the skills and the education that they have acquired in Sitara. So now I would like to uh, uh, present the four major challenges faced by the slum dwellers as depicted by the novelist and, and also uh, give the, uh, like the viable uh, solutions rec yeah. as recommended by the theorist. Ma'am, can you hear me actually? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, ma'am. So the first uh, problem is polluted environment. And uh, here you have uh, Sitara. Sitara is a swam turned uh, slum. It is situated on the eastern fringe of River Kuwam. Now this swam uh, becomes a, a dumping ground for the industries and construction to uh, uh, dump their waste. And it becomes the, later it becomes the home for the uh, people who migrated from, migrate from uh, the native place seeking better job opportunities in cities. Now this place of dirty water and garbage has become the breeding ground for uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. And uh, Kavi Nambishan, uh, she uh, talks about how this conversion of marshlands um, resulted uh, in the drying of the rivers and uh, and also the death of uh, fish and uh, less breeding of fish in the polluted water spoil the business and livelihood of the people. So one of the uh, fishmongers uh, complained that there used to be plenty of water in the creek and the fish were full of flavor. They started poisoning the water by throwing all rubbish and the fish sting so much and no one will buy from us. So this is uh, the uh, is agony of a uh, person there uh, and it affects their livelihood. And now we see the slum uh, dwellers also face tough time living in homes um, uh, with the 10 uh, to 15 people living in a room with no proper water supply and electricity. Now, in addition to this, you have the decomposed slaughterhouse meat, uh, then sludge from tannery, the continuous burning and emission of uh, methane and uh, uh, sorry, methane uh, from uh, garbage and open defecation also further pollute the environment and uh, it sabotage the quality of life of the slum dwellers. So you can see here how they are uh, forced to adapt themselves to this unhygienic environment. And you can see how the, how the, uh, uh, the characters talking about the problems they face because of uh, all these burning of garbage and also the decomposed meat in every possible state of decomposition they could see the meat scattered uh, in the slum and uh, uh, and now uh, now De uh, jean bruze a belgium born in uh, indian uh, welfare economist he say economist he says that development has to be environment inclusive and Sen also states that if um, if development is enhancing the quality of life, then it cannot be divorced from ecological and environmental crime, uh, concerns. And uh, this capability approach, which recommends the proper maintenance of environment, uh, uh, because uh, uh, the important components of the environment, like air, water, and uh, the surrounding, they play a very crucial role in human flourishing. So, um, so preserving an uh, preserving an en uh, environment is an active pursuit, and every human being is entitled to improve the environment. And measures should be taken to halt this environmental destruction. So, uh, constructive human intervention should have been done to preserve the integrity of the slum, but nobody did that for them. And uh, uh, so, this is because of the lack of opportunities. Now, the second one is the chai. Uh, Second problem is child labor. So child labor is again, uh, she wants to, she exposes the truth of how the slum children are subjected to child labor due to the unavailability of opportunities and they are denied uh, the freedom to get primary education. So the children are forced to do menial work like uh, to, sup uh, to support their families. Like you see Velu, that can and go with these boys do all the household chores at uh, Viber. They wash the cars, they move the uh, furniture, baggage, luggage, and they earn 30 rupees a day. And um, so, and you also find uh, liquor uh, smugglers using these boys to smuggle liquor at night. And uh, boys aged uh, 
10 to 14 are forced to work in factories and in furniture uh, furniture shops now uh, uh, kaveri uh, wants to speak about she draws the attention of the readers to the dangers involved in the jobs uh, done in baking units and buckle factories so uh, the uh, sorry, the boys are uh, forced to stir the contents of the massive iron pot standing near the glowing fire and lift the pot uh, and pour the molten brass into the molds. Uh, so here uh, one can see the bo uh, see notice or uh, the trembling concentration on the young faces and the strain in their bodies. And she also picturizes boys with soot covered faces and sweat dripping bodies in the midst of fire. So uh, uh, one of the characters, uh, Chellam, uh, says the work the work is too dangerous and one spill on your foot and your foot is gone. So it shows the intensity of the risks involved in this uh, work. And she also talks about the plight of the uh, boys at a furniture shop where they are allowed to, uh, uh, what to say, uh, play in a groove and ridge the wood with hammers, pliers and chisels. And uh, they, they do this with a dream of becoming a carpenter in future, but their physical and mental agony remain uh, remains like uh, un unnoticed and neglected. So it remained unnoticed. Uh, so here, uh, Kaveri delineates how a hundred, uh, uh, what to say, uh, splinters of wood, uh, no, no thicker than a hair, uh, caught under their tender skin, leave them sleepless every night. And they also have the scars in their palms and fingers. And they could hardly, can hardly hold a uh, pencil or eat with their fingers. So she exposes this fact that lit illiterate boys are, are continue to be in a bonded yeah. labor. And uh, Sen states that because of their economic deprivation, they are forced to do these things. So Druze again, who is working, uh, who has been working on issues on child labor, uh, sorry, child health and education, he states that incidence of child labor is intimately connected with the non-schooling of children, and the distressing phenomenon of uh, um, child labor can be reduced by the expansion of schooling. So here, uh, Sendamare, a bright student, uh, she's forced to discontinue her studies to financially support her family. So the novels portray the uh, child laborers and the Sentamare as the victims of educational deprivation. And she emphasizes the need to put an end to this child exploitation by providing the essential or elementary education to all children. Now, the third one is manual scavenging. Manual scavenging is another dehumanizing um, act. And here the, she talks about the working conditions of the sanitation uh, employers, employees. And uh, the men and the women uh, workers are forced to clean uh, toilets and to endure obnoxious smells and poisonous gases. Now here, Kitten is addicted to drinks and his now wife, Nanji, is, uh, she has... Uh, 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 and a disease and it, uh, an ailment. Now the disruption there is uh, there in the relationships and also their son dies very early. So these are the consequences of uh, unemployment and poverty. Now the novelist uh, tries to connect how this kind of uh, uh, depression, isolation, poverty push them to liquor uh, addiction and they indulge themselves in such bad habits to forget their humiliation and uh, financial stress. Now, uh, Martha Nussbaum, uh, an American philosopher and an advocator of capability approach, she says that capability approach uh, holds a person as a bearer of value. Each person has their has his own worth. And she also says that <clears throat> one cannot be expo exploited for the sake of another. And she also says human life devoid of action, dignity, and making decisions and choices is akin to experiencing death. And you uh, and we uh, we uh, notice that it's highly impossible for these people to enjoy such a dignified life with more choices and actions. And they dare not uh, to voice out their anguish, but they continue to embrace these kind of adversities with a dumb heart. So here, um, the third like uh, thing is poverty uh, according to sen or according to this concept of uh, capability approach poverty is considered as capability deprivation so capability approach views poverty as capable uh, sorry uh, capability deprivation rather than uh, <coughs> merely as as low income 
and we all notice that see already we have seen the lack of opportunities has pushed the people to this state of penury now this uh, condition further restricts the expansion of uh, the opportunities in their life and so capability depletion could be perceived as uh, the cause and uh, the cause and consequence of poverty now uh, and uh, sen also says that uh, that's some kind of uh, income uh, deprivation and uh, capability deprivation has some link link linkage now uh, in sitara you fire these people face both inadequacies of income and opportunities and uh, they uh, not only lack uh, the income income part but also um, they uh, lack the ability to convert this income to Uh, capabilities so uh, nambi sen she brings in instances from the novel uh, to show how low income proves to be one of the reasons for this basic deprivation you see nanji the mother of that kid is not able to treat her disease that kid and uh, sendamare they are deprived of they are not able to continue their uh, education so uh, and again you find valli she uh, she spends most of her days uh, uh, with an empty uh, st- she goes to bed with an um, empty stomach she says if uh, if only i could get a plate of rice sambar and pickle and no one to share it with me uh, she says and uh, she point like her hungry uh, sorry her greedy stomach crying for food so th- these kind of basic uh, freedoms such as education food health seem unattainable to these people because of the poor financial status so the children as uh, laborers um, then unemployed men as budding criminals and women as maids are the consequence of capable capability deprivation now coming to uh, the conclusion part uh, so here um, i so th- these are the problems social uh, economic problems faced by the slum dwellers and uh, now identifying the areas of deprivation and prioritizing the capabilities that they value could help them to resolve this problem and uh, now the theorist and the novelist they believe that empowering a person to education could bring uh, in necessary changes in their life because capability to be uh, to get educated is considered as the foundational or the fundamental entitlement which would contribute to the con- uh, expansion of other opportunities in their lives which will ultimately made um, uh, lead them to a flourishing or a good life to experience a flourishing life so the first one is literacy as a an essential tool of self defense to challenge social injustice and social insecurities now laura chapman uh, a specialist in education and trainer in disability in is uh, disability qual uh, equality she says that education is a key vehicle for challenging social injustice and ruse states an educated person is better equipped to overcome vulnerability and marginalization in modern society so we can see like uh, education transforms two people in that slum so uh, the swami goes to government uh, uh, school after his work at the slaughter house and on fridays he visits the pri- uh, public library and he reads meticulously after 2 years uh, he uh, he gets a job uh, at a night college and uh, now we have an, a prince uh, who also after his schooling go gets a job at a clinic and he utilizes the night shift time at the hospital to read books again and again to understand the functioning of human body and under the guidance of swami he starts a polyclinic with the uh, four consulting quacks like him so here uh, kaveri's uh, kaveri nambisan's prince and uh, swami they try hard they try very hard in this odd environment um, and they make uh, use of uh, fullest use of the opportunities available there to escape this gruesome poverty so it acts as a tool of self defense for these people literacy now the second one druse says education is education is widely perceived by members of socially and economically disadvantaged groups as the most promising means of upward mobility for their children so here you can see the life uh, the, lit- the lit- uh, sorry literacy enhances chandran and chandamari to um, uh, ensure like they get an assurance of a better future now and uh, e- uh, this uh, education expands avenues for them to earn adequate income to raise their living standards and they also uh, they also feel that uh, 
they have to send their child to a school and they plan for all that uh, a school for their young child girl to study and they feel this future is secure now again uh, so the third one is the positive uh, positive influences of uh, um, literacy do not benefit not only uh, benefit only the pe person who receives but also others who associate themselves with the person so druse says this and uh, as a highly goal oriented uh, teacher swami decides to stay in the slum uh, and he uh, and he wants to work for the upliftment of the slum children so uh, the ch uh, slum children get benefited uh, and here swami he wants the children to realize that only education can pull them out of this uh, hole uh, uh, like uh, uh, and he says that yeah, only this can facilitate them to earn uh, for their living in future not begging or stealing so he empowers them uh, to lead an independent life and uh, people like swami they make difference in others life so here the agency success of um, uh, swami has uh, paved way for social justice in that uh, in the society now um, now fourthly the education uh, part helps people to move from uh, a position of helplessness to one of hope so this uh, uh, capability of getting educated helps this uh, 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 characters like Swami, Prince, Chandran, uh, Sendamri Velu to move from a state of despair to that of hope. So hope for a change can be wrought only through education because without good education, there can be no social justice. So um, uh, both Sen and Nambi Sen, they advocate the expansion of opportunities in the lives of the disadvantaged to overcome poverty and break the shackles of misery. They believe that the first step to development is to guarantee the basic essentials to everyone. But at the same time, one should not forget this also because uh, basic education and health cannot improve the quality of life, but they can increase a person's ability to earn more, to be free from income poverty. If basic education and health care are made accessible accessible to people then even the potentially poor would have a better chance of overcoming poverty thank you ma'am thank you Is the presentation over? Yes, okay, I, I missed the last one. Okay. Anyone have any questions, comments? Because what whatever I listened to was wonderful, sir.
Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, that was a very comprehensive analysis of the text. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, I just wanted to know whether you used, other than Chen, did you use any other theories? Uh, it, because mostly you've done, you, what you used, I think it's for urban housing problems. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, and one more thing I want to ask is, is there any intimation of politics, government politics in uh, this... Uh, I uh, mean, moving of people from one place to another, suggested in the text. Actually, uh, this is done by uh, po politicians only, ma'am. Actually, they mm. wanted these people to move away uh, from this place. Uh, so it was like, um, it was uh, uh, done by po politics, media, police, and other people, ma'am. Yeah, that's how it is done. In, if it is Chennai, it is done like that. But yes. has he, I mean, has Kaveri Nambisan highlighted that or uh, or she just mulled it? Uh, she didn't uh, uh, she didn't talk about it in detail, ma'am. Just she uh, she has mentioned only a uh, few instances. Maybe in the last chapter it comes, ma'am. Only in the epilogue we come to know that this has happened. But uh, mm -hmm. other than that, we don't have any uh, detailing about it, ma'am. Yeah, where we choose to live is, I think, decided in our uh, area by the politicians, right? They decide where we live and where we, I mean, yes, and, yes, 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 that is, I think that uh, if, it's, if you were quoting, I mean, uh, I just wanted to know whether Sen mentions this also in, his, in the theories that you've used of Sen, I don't know which which was the article you used uh ma'am actually i took from uh, uh new, uh, new uh, one or two books ma'am like the development is uh, freedom and the idea of justice ma'am actually have you uh, you sensed uh, uh, ideas and also i have quoted uh, jean druse's um, and uh, martha nusbaum's uh, ideas also ma'am okay I think Arundhati Roy would have uh, Arundhati Roy also would have had some I mean some things to contribute to this. She I mean though she goes into the area of globalization, I think when she talks about housing and all that, she comes down to this narrows down to the political uh, I mean, uh, uh, scenario in the area where she deals. I mean, where she highlight what she, whatever she's highlighting. So, I mean, you've not chosen any particular I mean, uh, book at this, only you've taken articles uh, to support your claim. No, ma'am. Uh, books, ma'am, actually. Books, they are books, ma'am. Development, um, uh, 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 development as freedom and uh, idea of justice, ma'am. They both have books, ma'am. Okay. Um, it's written by Amatya Sen, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So there. Thank you. I came across another book also uh, called The Broken Ladder. So mm -hmm. that's also about poverty. So, you know, the uh, symbol of a broken ladder, you, they can't, they don't have access. That's also a book on development. There is also a similar text called Lost Train by Anish Jung, who is a social activist. He wrote on the matters of how a child's life is affected in the slum and the urban problems that a child faces. Interesting, Alina. So who wrote that? Who wrote that? Anish Jung. It's you can take it. OK. You can put it in the chat box so for students to see. Sorry. 
actually dickens work is also uh, can be analyzed a lot no from this angle of uh, economic policies this uh, quite a lot you know even ruskin has if ruskin, you know, yeah, yeah, this last, yeah. this, uh, last and uh, um, most of the i think novels written uh, in india today the mm -hmm. slum dog millionaire whatever whatever you uh, take mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the focus even though the focus is something else the background uh, what is the other one uh, one more thing no white tiger huh? Life all of this, tiger. They, uh, they so do white have, tiger white tiger yeah ah, white tiger they do have all uh, this as the background bombay mm -hmm. especially is that uh, terrible uh, you know biggest slum no we have the and, 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 yeah. <coughs> but we i the, i'd like to know that there i mean theories theoretical which theoretical aspects we can uh, use the theories other than amartya sen uh, the other person no the one who got nobel peace uh, yes, prize uh, that children i mean he worked among children satya sahayadri satyadri and uh, he i mean his name i forget yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Kailash Satyarthan. Kailash Satyarthan. Ah. yes 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 he i met, I, I had an opportunity to he was just telling us how difficult it is to bring out children from wherever they are working they taken as my parents sell them from these uh, countryside maybe at all slum areas they sell them into poverty i mean like they say, sell them to people yeah. who you know make use of them as bonded labors and how to bring the uh, bring them out from that how much the police don't help the politicians don't help uh, the local people don't help because everybody fears their lives so these are such goons Poli police uh, politicians all these are at the head of all this so we, when they are uh, maneuvering the whole thing how can we bring the i mean children out of out and save them you no know, bring them so that they can have a decent life uh, he did a lot i mean uh, he was he had uh, he was explaining how uh, that is, i think that is why he deserves that prize after after the indian episode i think he worked in mexico and all other places trying to help people to you know bring back children from such uh I mean uh, such uh, gruesome poverty and uh, you know hard work so i wonder if there is some i mean uh, there are some people who have talked about this economists whom we can use and all of it is of course we are trying to bring them um, give them social justice but uh, mm -hmm. what the go back to adam smith so you know when we talk anything to do with capitalism yeah but that is uh, i mean that is wealth and i mean uh, it's a root wealth of nations yeah yeah right is that again so are, yeah this no, i mean uh, recently uh, with uh, this kind of what you call development developmental schemes we've had quite a lot of uh, i mean theory only thing is i since i was not interested in or uh, ricardo is welfare economics uh, uh, there are a uh, few others G galbraith is it kenneth gal galbraith i don't and know they are jun appadore also those the, about ah, right. have, yes actually students you can look up you can read up a lot on arjun appadore all his articles and actually no sri lata we we can even you know give mm -hmm. them a reading list which comes down from adam smith up to yeah so so much connection between literature and economics the yeah, i this galbraith person then some uh, ricardo ricardo i read a lot because of uh, you see no ruskin 
had to teach that uh, unto this last. And uh, the uh, <laughs> money being the root of all evil, that's uh, that the way they call it welfare economics or something like that. Today it has gone on to this has I mean this comes into the area of globalization and economics. Welfare economics is an Amartya sense. Oh, Ricardo, I think, was the one who started. I mean, much earlier. Mm. Okay, we have. I stopped long ago. I mean, I into the area of globalization. I haven't read much, though. Of course. We do read of what uh, eco equity and uh, other kinds of things. I think all of them get mixed up. Ecological uh, uh, justice, environmental uh, environmental justice, no. Uh, re what is a rehabilit? What do they call it? Uh, uh, removing people from one area. To another, I, this uh, Arundhati Roy yeah, about the dams and all that. They she had the greater common good, the greater common good, the greater common uh, good, and some of her other articles also. I don't know uh, she a collection she has where she talked about. Uh, you know, when you move a person, I, I think even Mahashweta Devi talked from one area and uh, ask them to live in another. I always wonder, people from Kilpok area were moved, you know, from the slums, uh, from that Mangatop slum, which I know so well, they were taken, I think, uh, to the outskirts, uh, Torepakam and all that. But what they do is they leave that and they do come back again here. They don't stay where the government puts them. Basically, because they cannot find, uh, op they have lesser opportunities. In, a, in an area where they are familiar with, I think they know where which school to go, government school to go and all that. But when they are taken that far away, then they find it very difficult. Most, of, I mean, most, most of these families are reluctant to leave these, the area where they live and go to one family. But the government provides, I've seen them, they were all put into vans, you know, and they're all with all their things, and uh, they are sent away. Very few people do come back. Yeah, I'll, the, the, I mean, Ita has mentioned the Alf, I mean, algebra of infinite just, I've read the articles from them also but i have not done it to such an extent because it can, economics is only one part of what we uh, do no <laughs> yeah this arjun apadurai one is the five scapes of globalization mm. and with globalization yeah ethnos, uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the different flows technology yeah post uh, with the post colonial uh, theories this comes in actually a lot this uh, area called uh, urban housing has particular theories. I attended some thing in IIT where they there were theories. I I didn't. Uh, I mean, it, they were to wholly econ economic. It was a wholly economic uh, seminar. So that uh, they give statistics, a whole lot of statistics, and see for us that great statistics is not necessary. Just enough to know the theory. <coughs> and actually, we had to have one more speaker today. She couldn't join because uh, oh. she couldn't get permission from her institute. I was on her doctoral committee. She had okay. worked on the IBIS trilogy on the idea of cosmopolitanism. Uh, uh -huh. uh, so that is also one thing that we can look at. Ghosh's writings. Mm. He's an anthropologist himself. So Mm -hmm. That uh, angle of, uh, you know, yeah, of cultural as a cultural mm -hmm. theorist, as an econ uh, from economic point of view, a culture point of view. That's... No, but our students will be familiar with this book. This book is a very nice 
uh, starting point uh, to for uh, what uh, the housing and its uh, problems earlier we would have just looked at you know the rich man in his castle and the poor man at the gate right uh, uh, that's that would be the typical uh, uh, thing a way of looking at today we go beyond that to analyze any number of uh, problems that are connected with this kind of vast differences in economic uh, opportunities. I would request you all to see the national debate held by the Telegraph. Uh, the topic was cronies breaking, breaking capitalism. <laughs> it's available on YouTube. <coughs> Thank you, Alina. Yeah. So, um, any, I think we didn't have many, don't have many seniors here, only students. I know. Uh, I could be nearly today. I was, I was not keeping too well. So I had just, this has just crossed my mind. So I'm so sorry. I, I was but happy that I came in just like that. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. All right. right. We can wind up now, Sri Lata. Yeah, we can. Thank you, Shad, uh, Sharon. It was uh, a very, very uh, lucid presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think uh, for, if the students here, it's mostly QMC students here, they can respond and say how they. Yes, ma'am. Anyone wants to thank Madam, you can thank her. And, uh, we can then close the session. Ma'am, uh, I would like to thank you for delivering such a wonderful presentation before us and uh, we are all, all blessed to have such a presentation that made us aware of the current situation and the socio-political scenario of Chennai. Thank you, Alina. Yeah, I think Kaveri Nambirisan is a very simple read and I think every one of the students can read it uh, uh, and then maybe respond in a class uh, symposium or something like that class uh, discussion or something like that because I think it's where this is an area that's very close to them close to them all the Chennai people true true mm -hmm. Farhana you can present the vote of thanks ma'am okay yeah. thank you ma'am we have come to the end of the session. I give it an honor to propose a vote of thanks. I thank our keynote speaker, Dr. Dana Bakir Sharin, for sharing her valuable insights on education equity. I thank our college principal for her constant support. A heartfelt thanks to Dr. Maria Preeti Srinivasan, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of English, for providing various research opportunities to the research scholars. I thank all the staff members and teachers scholars who are present at this forum. Thank you all. We will meet again after the phone match on 16th of February 2024 with the topic Interdisciplinary Studies, Literature and Legal Studies. Thank you all. Thank you, Farhana. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good night.